Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spudknocker, as always, and today we are here on a beautiful early morning on the NTTR to head back home to Naval Air Station Fallon, back up north. We're down here at Nellis to help out our Air Force brethren with their training needs, and now it's time to head home. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and hop in the cockpit and we'll get started. As we can hear, there's some wind blowing, but we've got a pretty beautiful morning here uh, at Nellis. A little bit of fog, but visibility is good. So we'll go ahead and pull up our checklist here. No aircraft is started in real life without a checklist. Checklists were not in use until uh, shortly before World War II. It was considered unmanly. To be a manly man, awesome pilot man, you had to be able to memorize and start your aircraft and do anything you needed to do without using a checklist. However, with the creation of the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress in the mid to late 1930s, the aircraft was so complicated that the pilot and co-pilot and crew members could not possibly remember every single little thing that had to be done in order to get the aircraft started. Because pilots initially refused to use checklists, aircraft crash, pilots and crew members were killed, including a number of innocent bystanders on, on the ground. This of course is unacceptable, and checklists were invented. So before start checklist, parking brake, set anti-skid on because we're at a uh, field master arm safe wings matches wing fold our wingman has something different looks like he's already started his apu so he's ahead of the game battery on volts look good brake pressure 3000 fire test a Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and cycle the battery, leave it for a couple seconds. Circuit B. All right, we'll check the wings again. Yes, they match. Go ahead and start up the APU. While that's cranking, we'll go ahead and close the canopy, get it a little bit quiet for us. All righty, that's better. We still got our earplugs in because it's still gonna be a bit loud. Canopy close. Strobe light, so radio's set up. Strobe's on, position light's on. Strobe is bright. Engine right crank. Got our engine coming up. Right throttle to idle. I love that sound of the AMAD coming online. The sounds in the F-18 Hornet just blow me away sometimes. Alrighty, we'll go ahead and cycle our bleed air valve. 
Alrighty, that feels a little better in here. It was already getting a little bit hot and it's only seven o'clock. Light test. Light test is good. Left DDI, right DDI, HUD, MPCD, INS, two, ground align. The ground align should take about three minutes. On the carrier, it will go faster. The reason it goes faster on the carrier is instead of integrally aligning our INS, our gyros, and our position, uh, finding our positions and all this kind of stuff, we actually uh, receive positioning information on a cable from the master INS system on the carrier. And that is because we couldn't align our INS ourselves on the carrier because of the constant motion of the carrier plowing through the water. All right, INS is on CV. We'll go ahead and set to FCS, it failures. We'll go ahead and bring our, thro our flaps up. Restack our cautions. Good there. Engine crank left. Left throttle to idle. Flaps to auto, we've already got that. FCS reset. Cleared our X's, perfect. Radar operate. FCS bit. I'm not sure if this is actually implemented in this build. I couldn't get it to run the FCS bit on the actual training mission here in DCS World, but we'll go ahead and perform it anyway just for the sake of the video. Um, I'm sure if it's not in this build, it'll be updated soon. So go ahead and press Y, and we will hold our sensors. I could be doing something wrong there. I'm not totally sure, but uh, we'll figure that out later. So our APU just finished. It doing its thing. Radar is in operate. Flaps in auto. Flaps down to half. Flaps to half. Obogs on. Trim button press. Stabs to 12. Perfect. All right, check 30s and 12s. Got that on our FCS. ADI uncage. Radio altimeter on and set. Alrighty, so I guess we can't drag this guy. We're gonna have to uh, use our mouse wheel. So we'll set it for 300 for now. Good here, all right, so HSI, waypoint, auto, TACAN on and set. We're not gonna set a TACAN here, but uh, we would. We're down, check. Good. 
left DDI, right DDI, menu HUD, menu support FCS. 30s and 12s are still good. Ejection seat armed. Over to nav. Nose wheel steering is on. Brake is off. And we are ready to taxi. So we'll go ahead and start our taxi. I've said this in previous videos, but my grandfather, who is an A1 Sky Raider pilot in Vietnam, has really pushed into me the importance of staying on the center line while you're taxiing at all times whether you're flying in general aviation, military aviation, commercial aviation, anything. As this shows off the professionalism you have as a pilot. In the FA-18, it's very easy to taxi too fast. And if you taxi too fast, it'd be very hard to stay on the center line. As you can see, I'm still trying to figure out the turning radius exactly of nose wheel steering high gain versus nose wheel steering normal. Get back to the center line here. We'll go ahead and tighten our straps as we taxi the runway here. The incredibly bright cockpit we're seeing here is not anything we've done in the cockpit. It is a simple bug uh, that is in DCS world at the moment that allows bright lights to come through the skin of the aircraft and illuminate the cockpit. The strobe on the Mirage 2000 and the AV-8B Harrier uh, do the same thing, except it would be flashing. So that is actually the landing light of our wingmen behind us. Just checking around the cockpit as we taxi here, just making sure we've got everything set. Ah, here's something we didn't set, but it's an easy correction. We need to make sure we set our bingo. I like to set it to about half of the fuel we have on board, so at the moment that'd be about 6,000 pounds. Do a little adjustment on our taxi to stay on the center line. And that looks pretty darn good. Why don't we go ahead and take a screenshot. Now one thing that would be a super cool addition to DCS World that I would love to see in the future is if we could have our checklist 
and our knee board actually show up on our pilot body down here. That would be really cool. I think that there may be some plans for that because as you can see, our knee board does not have a texture on it. So maybe that's something to be implemented later. That'd be very neat. Especially for VR users. Make sure we stay on the center line. You can hear, hear our environmental control system kick in there. And here's the stop short. We'll pull up our checklist again. Before takeoff checklist, wing fold locked, matches our wings, trim, check for takeoff, good highs, good lows, hook is up, just for a check, yep, hook matches our handle, air brake is in. Landing light is on. Because we are on a field, we can ignore the launch bar extend. And we can go ahead and taxi out to the runway. Now, one thing to note, if we are flying home, like we are flying home back to NAS Fallon, pilots can be subject to what's called get home-itis. The ignoring of issues with their aircraft or with their weapons or anything else that is related to the aircraft due to wanting to get home. We need to make sure that we are mentally prepared to be able to abort the mission regardless of whether we uh, need to get home or not. So. Our aircraft is good to go, so we don't need to worry too much about get home itis. But we do need to worry that if we run into weather, any issues on the flight, and we can't make it home to NAS Fallon, that we make sure we have the mental strength to be able to abort the mission. Alrighty. So with that out of the way, our checklist is good. We'll go ahead and put our checklist away, and we'll get ready for takeoff. Push it up to waypoint one. Notice we're steering. We'll go ahead and turn that off. And check everything. Everything looks good. We'll go ahead and push it up. Now, when you take off, you need to make sure that you get your gear up prior to reaching 240 knots or you can blow off your nose gear doors. You can still continue on the mission if this does occur. However, as I stated previously, you will look ridiculous when you land. Your crew chief will not be very happy and you'll probably earn yourself a new call sign. So. I hope you liked this little short guide on taking off, starting up, and taxiing in the Hornet. I'm sure I'll have more for you guys in the future, uh, but in the meantime, enjoy the Hornet. It's a beautiful airplane and a work of art. Thank you, ED, once again. And fly safe, guys. Try not to break too many of these guys.